Hey guys, it's Glenn with DIY Creators and today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and simple benchtop clamping jig. The build is based on one and a half inch bolts, but this can easily be switched out for three and a half inch bolts, which allow you to add an extension. And with the larger clamping area, this allows you to hold on to larger pieces. Now I didn't have any way of testing the clamping force, but for what I need this for, this will get the job done. Now as I begin the build process, I can now make my first cut at 14 inches. Then, after making the first pass, cut the board down the width, I'm going to flip the board around again and then also make a second cut at 14 inches. I'm going to need to do this twice because I need two of those. Now in the plywood should work just fine, I'm just using pieces that I had laying around in the shop. Next, locate a piece of solid stock, preferably hardwood because we want to put thread in at least one of these. Now after marking out the width of the board, you want to rip those down on the table saw. You're going to need two of these. And both of these will be used for the front and the back bar of the clamp. Next, I'm going to make the bar the same width as the base. And instead of pulling out a tape measure, I'm just going to line them up and make a mark. Now cut the lumber at the line. And a quick tip for you, if you ever need to make some precise cuts, always practice on something that you don't need. And then you can make your final cut. And we're on to the next step. Now I need to laminate the two pieces of plywood base that I recently cut. Now just place weight on top of it or you can just clamp that down as well and allow enough time for the glue to dry. And over at the drill press I'm going to be drilling the front and the back bar but I did set up a stop and a quick jig so that I can drill consistent holes on both sides. So on the drill press I set up a stop so I didn't go all the way through. If you're using a drill to make this just put tape on it and this way you don't go all the way through as well. For this piece I'm going to remove the stop and run the bit all the way through. The threaded rod needs to pass through this and into the next. Now I'm going to route in two three quarter inch slots into the base, one on each side, and this will be for the inserted T-track. Placing a piece of wood in the front and in the back of your routing path will greatly reduce any blowouts. Repeat the same steps for the opposite side and just remove enough material for the T-track to sit flush with the surface. Cut the T-Track to the length of the board. It's made of aluminum, so you can cut it with a metal cutting blade, or you can also use a handsaw. Now cut the two threaded rod to extend just beyond the base of the jig. Now in order for this to work correctly, you're gonna wanna be dead on. I find it easiest to slide the bolt in the T-Track and then mark a line on the outside of the bolts. I'm also going to transfer that to a piece of scrap wood and mark end on one side so I know which way to set up the jig at my drill press. Now you're going to want to find the center of this and setting up a jig at the drill press will just allow me to make these holes much faster. Now with the test piece this actually looks good so now I'm confident I can just transfer this over to the other pieces and move on. You're going to also want to put a quick round over on the ends and this should help prevent the plywood from peeling. You can use your router or you can use a sander. And for the finish I'm going to add two coats of shellac on here. I like this because it dries really fast and I can just add my coats really quick and move on. And at this point we can install the T-Tracks. Now slide four bolts into the track and then we're going to place the back bar onto the bolts. And the way to identify the back bar is the one with the hose that does not go all the way through. Now place the other bar on the two remaining bolts and tighten them down. And to drive the threaded rod into the wood you can use a T-track bolt along with a threaded insert or you can use a T-nut. But I do have a bolt knob which will let me get a better handle on this. You can apply a little bit of wood glue in here and that would help hold the bolt in place. But I'm going to give this a shot without the wood glue. So what I'm going to do here is as you can see I'm going to take the bolt and just drive it into the wood. And that's going into the wand on the back side. And to make this blend in a little more I'm going to spray the ends to match the knobs. The way this jig is supposed to work is you want to lock the front bar in place. 
Then you want to place your subject in the open area. Next, you want to pull the clamp tight and then lock it down. Now loosening up the front bar would allow you to apply even more pressure by tightening up the knobs. I'm going to give you a few samples on the use of this jig. Now this can be useful for small objects or you may need a second hand just holding a piece of plywood. And even with the low profile clamping bars, this does provide a good strong grip. You can use any of the T-Track clamps along with the accessories and you can also take this over to the drill press to use as a helping hand. Hey guys and thanks for checking out the video. I do have some exciting things to let you guys know that I'm actually working on some of these to-do lists. Some of you guys have asked me to make some stuff so I'm now getting to my to-do list. We got some limited tool stuff coming. We got some DIY bills and we also got some cool, you know, more complicated things coming your way. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you check out some of my other videos and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and I'll see you next time.